Good morning, assalamu alaikum. Uh, back again uh, to the chaplaincy show. My favorite show because I get to talk to people, I get to ask all these questions, and uh, I, I just love this show. Why? Because uh, it's such a personal show for me because I am knowing uh, and getting to know so much about these people. Uh, people that I work with on a daily basis, people I actually don't get time to talk to. Today I've got a really, really special guest. Someone um, I can say I have uh, taught, not in a, in a very, uh, I, I wouldn't say in a structured way, but I have taught somehow. Uh, and, and someone that I've known really well. Someone actually, I know them uh, on, on a personal level as well. And, and uh, someone that's really shined, um, uh, you know, uh, starting her career from AIA and then also starting another career from AIA as well. So I will let, um, uh, you know, my guests tell you what I really meant by that. Uh, and um, uh, it's none other than our school counselor. And uh, also, uh, there's some surprising facts which I'm not going to break loose right now. Uh, it's none other than Miss uh, Kaya, and that's Rukin. And so we'll pass it on to her and we'll ask her first to tell us about herself, a little bit about herself, and then to move on into the photo that I've got displayed. Okay. Well, assalamu alaikum, everyone uh, that's watching. And thank you, Chef Farhan, for that very generous introduction. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I did graduate from AIA. I think that's the first thing that people <laughs> know about me. Um, I graduated in 2018. Um, I then went into Macquarie University to study psychology. Um, I'm now doing counselling back at AIA. Um, this photo here is a photo of me and my grandfather. My grandfather is a refugee who came here. He actually went to Germany first and then came to Australia. His first night in Australia, he slept under a bridge um, until he was <laughs> escorted the next morning. And then from then on, he joined into the um, the Kurdish community here in, uh, in Australia, in Sydney, and um, very grateful for all the sacrifices that he's made for our family to live here. Um, and yeah, that's a photo of uh, me and him. And that was in Blacktown, which is where I was born. And, uh, yeah, that's the story of that photo. Now, look, um, that's such a great values that you hold, that you always uh, keep them. And, you know, today, nowadays, when you do ask children, children actually uh, hardly, uh, well, I'm talking about uh, the, the modern children, they hardly go uh, that back and relate to their grandparents in such a, such a reverence that you showed today. I'm actually very amazed of your values. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's it's he's still he's here today. He was walking around, he's doing his gardening. And um he recently came back from Turkey. And of course, yeah, grandparents you can they always have a special place. May Allah give him long life and health and good health and he always remains uh, you know, uh like a shade uh, on top of you and your family. Thank you so much. All right, look, uh, with those emotional bits, let's get into some humor. Yeah. Uh, tell, us, tell us about yourself, particularly my first question, easing into my first question. You are still a student as I see you. Uh, you're still, um, uh, you're, you're a young woman, a passionate and, and you know, uh, a high achieving young woman as I see you. Tell, tell me what's something that you always wanted to learn. And I know there's a long journey to learn. I, I would say you're a great counsellor, you do a great job, you're well loved by, by students in the school. But tell us, you know, we all, we all want to learn something. What's something that you always wanted to learn? Um, well, start, so starting off, psychology was always something that I wanted to learn. It's something that I'm still learning. Um, when I was younger, I always wanted to learn a musical instrument. Never got around it. Um, another thing that I want to sort of go into is philosophy. I did a couple of units of philosophy in my university degree and I found it so interesting, especially with the way that it some connects and sometimes disconnects with religion. Um, so I think philosophy is something that I want to continue on studying. Um, but yeah, in short, that's, that's it. That's it. Uh, you know what? Uh, people actually don't know about me. 
I started graduating from University of Barking, learning philosophy, Bachelor's of Philosophy. But that was it. I only did not even get to finish uh, uh, three weeks of philosophy before I embarked on the journey to become what I am today and right. travel to the cities. I heard that you studied psychology as well. Have you started that or is that? I, I have. I have started it, but where you just spilled the beans. So uh, that was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I have started it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I have. And so I'm looking into it. So uh, we're just going through the formal process of paperwork from UNE where I actually got right. graduated for my teaching degree. So yeah. I will be starting in trimester two officially. Inshallah. Sounds great. It's a very interesting field. And, you know, it's one of those where people think psychology is, comes from common knowledge, but it's actually a very thorough science. And, um, you know, a lot of people think we can take psychology out of, you know, our culture and, you know, what we learn about society through our own experiences. But a lot of the times, even from what we learn in our own experiences and from our culture, there's a lot of contradictions in, in what we're learning, like, for example, um, just off the top of my head, you know, the quote, like, birds of the same feather flock together. And then there's also the quote that's opposites attract. So it's like, well, which one is it? And um, that's when psychology comes in and says, well, actually, this is the reality and this is what it is based on the evidence. That's right. And, and you know what? That's my favourite quote. Birds of the feather, birds of the same feather uh, flock together. So that's what I'm mostly using the khutbas for yeah. the students. Yeah. No, look, um, and, and I'm sure, you know, there's always uh, so many things that we want to learn in our lives. And uh, is there anything from a hobby perspective? As I said, you're, you're, uh, you're still very young and there's so much that you can learn. Uh, not to take away your brilliance and, and what you do great. <laughs> But also, there is there's so much room to learn. Is there anything else from a part of a hobby that you always like? We spoke about music, okay? Was yeah. that music? So, is that something that you're looking into, or you're paying any any attention at the moment? Not really. I was always interested in the creative side as well, especially when I was in year twelve. I actually wanted to become an art teacher. Um, maybe that's something that I can do in the future. I really enjoy painting and drawing. Um, it just allows me to express like a different kind of creativity, especially after a, a long day of listening and talking. It's a really um, nice way for me to just have my own time as well. So maybe in the future I can do art teaching, but I think that's a long way down the road. <laughs> well, if the lead is you're listening, we don't have to look for an art teacher. <laughs> We can have a good transition uh, into the Department of Arts. I was thinking of sort of merging the two where I can kind of um, diverge into that creative side through doing art therapy. So um, continuing on with uh, psychology and clinical psychology, but maybe taking in um, some interest in art therapy as well. Well, that's so, so creative. Also, look, I can vouch for your creativity. I have the honour to do a fundraiser for your calendar. This was uh, uh, going back in the Ramadan two or three years ago when you designed something. I remember did? that. Yes, it was a calendar that you designed and oh. on a Friday when you were selling those. Oh, yes, I do remember. It was in front of the, um, the community center and I was... Yeah. That's right. Harvey yeah. Lowe Pavilion. Yeah, wow, I can't believe you remember that. It was so long ago. <laughs> well, look, I've got a, a memory of an elephant. I still remember... Uh, you know, uh, the memories of my childhood. Like, I, I am actually very good at remembering things. Yeah. Well, you know, a, a lot of people, when they lose their memory, they actually tend to lose their short-term memory before they lose their long-term memory because those are the more embedded memories. So That's right. And it was a passionate moment. And the people don't know, I go a long way with your dad as well. So for me yeah. to do something for your family on that day, I think it was, it was an honour. It was a great experience. You know, actually, I feel like teachers honestly have the best memory and they'll tell me things that I've done in year 12 and I was like, how can you remember that? And I don't. <laughs> okay. You know what? When we're young, there's so many things. I mean, if you ask me about my school, yeah, definitely. I'll be like you as well. How can you remember that? How I should you... only remember. Yeah, it's just the blur. Oh. 
Apart from that, well, what else? I mean, would you like to add anything else to the list? I know the list is really long, but something burning passion, always wanted to do, never, never got a chance or never had the time to do it. Um, I don't think there's, there's anything else. Of course, I'd like to um, learn more about Islam as well, about my own religion, um, and even learn how to sort of cross those barriers which are stopping me from, you know, attaining that knowledge. Um, that's a very uh, interesting journey that I would like to go on. Um, yeah, I think, you know, learning things is one thing and then learning how to learn things is another thing. So they're both very important. Well, that's very deep. So that requires a lecture, learning things. <laughs> Is another thing and learning how to learn things that's is right. another that's yeah. right that's actually very well said i i would say that is deep so yeah. well Maybe. okay that brings me to my second question something that you know well i know you know so many things well uh i i can i don't know if i can say this now but I, you're a grateful maker so i know you know a lot of things well so tell me what what do you think you know well um I think I know um, how to listen well. I think I n am still learning people, but I know people well. I think I know culture well, um, and I'm still, you know, um, learning society, but that's another thing that I think I know well. Um, and sort of interaction. I think is another thing that I'm interested in and I know well. Social interaction is something that's very interesting to me. Um, but, yeah, I think those are the things that I know well and I think those are the things that I've mostly picked up from my degree. What are the things that, that you think you know well? I know well. So you're interviewing me now. You're, you're trying that psychology on me. I think I can talk well. I So sometimes students ask me that you talk a lot and I said I, I get paid for to talk. So... <laughs> <laughs> I think I could do that well. Well, Thanks. on that level, tell me something that you do with a physical activity. I know you're a good psychologist. I know you know your words well. But tell us, are you someone who's sporty, someone who actually knows some, uh, like some hobbies that you do well or something that you do well apart from these things? Yeah, I go to the gym. Actually, a lot of people don't know that about me. I go to the gym like five times a week, pretty dedicated. Um, it's just something that, it just lets the stress out at the end of the day. You need it for sure. Um, I try to take care of my diet as much as I can, um, get my protein intake for the gym. My mum's really against it. She doesn't like the protein. She thinks it's like a drug. And I'm like, mum, it's literally milk protein. <laughs> but um, that's something that we're getting around as well. But, yeah, diet and gym, I'm pretty into it as well. I think it's um, just something that makes me feel good. Um, and I enjoy it, yeah. You know, I, I like you young people. I like you when you speak protein intake <laughs> and all these intakes. I think when I was growing up, there was only one intake. That was food intake. So <laughs> every, everything came with, along with food. Yeah. Right, that's why your mom's very scared when, when you say right. the word protein. Yeah. She thinks you're not having food. You're only having protein. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need to break it down. Definitely. I've tried, but I think it's it's the form. It comes in that powder form. It's frightening. Oh, oh it's yeah. that powder. Yeah, that's what they don't like. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Well, anything else you would like to add that you know really well? Um, well, I'm part of the, um, the Kurdish youth here in Sydney. So I think I'm learning politics. I wouldn't say I know it really well, but I think Kurdish politics is something that um, – I'm learning and trying to understand. Um, I think it's something that I picked up from my parents as well from a young age. They always had the news on, um, always reading the newspapers and that kind of thing. Uh, so I think that's something else that I know well. Yeah, that's one of the unfortunate parts, as you said. It's not an easy part. And uh, unfortunately, we live in those day, uh, day and ages where there's so much conflict and it's so hard even to get people their rights because of these conflicts and egos that exist in today's day and age. Definitely. 
and and uh, and you know what, media doesn't do a great job for you guys as well. So really that's where because um, media is not really invested in the giving uh, that freedom or or even uh, talking about the rights of those minorities. Because for the media, for the world power, you, you guys are just numbers, and that's the unfortunate thing. They only go after where money or where economics lies, and it's not really. Uh, and and our, our, we live in those day and ages, as you know, uh, as we're speaking about your country or your, uh, you know, uh, origins. That's exactly the same happening to so many other people around the world as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, I actually do enjoy politics, but as long as I'm in the driving seat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like Australian politics is not much. I feel like a lot of us are more invested in overseas politics, especially us ethnics. Um, and and you know what? I, if you ask me, definitely you're right. I should know more about British politics, and I'm watching it very closely. Who's actually going to win? Is it Liz Truss or Rishi Sunak? So I've been actually following that um, very closely. I, I'm still stuck on uh, the blonde guy, Boris. What's his name? <laughs> well, Boris Johnson. Boris, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Johnson's gone now because of his <laughs> corruption. He actually has to stand down. So there is a race going on between Liz Truss and Rishi Sunak, and right. they're the leading contenders. And, and they're, actually, uh, they're actually fighting who is actually going to become the next prime minister. So Boris Johnson is only the caretaker for now. Right. So the results are going, going to come out in September. They're very, very soon. And uh, the prime minister will be decided. As you, as you said rightly, we are invested in this foreign politics more than we are in our own politics that's right absolutely well i wish you great uh for your political career i actually would like to see you as a local member and I'm, i guarantee you um i get my family to vote for you Thank and you. <laughs> so if you are a local <laughs> member i'm a dual citizen so i have to cancel my my turkish membership um to be able to run for mp Oh, so we're both on the same boat. Yeah, so I can't, <laughs> I can't really progress from there. I'm, I'm stuck. I think you could be on a local level, but not on a on a I, federal level. I think so. Okay, yeah. that, that's the only problem, the federal level. All right, yeah. that brings me to my next question. What yes. is something very surprising about you? Yeah, so tell us what's something really surprising about you, a surprising fact that people may not know. A surprising fact... Oh, I haven't thought about this question. I think the, the gym that I mentioned before is probably a surprising fact. Um, I thought you were the student in the school that many people was, would know that. That's a surprising fact about you as well. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the students know that about me now. In fact, one of the students came up to me the other day after prayer and said, I did some research about you and you were here in 2018. <laughs> research. Yeah, <laughs> research, okay. Yeah, yeah but I think... Um, I don't think there's anything particularly surprising about me. I like to be an open book, um, transparent. Uh, yeah. I think you're a politician. That's a surprising fact. I'm getting, I'm, I'm trying, but I would definitely not say that I'm a politician. <laughs> Oh, well, well, look, if you're Australian, uh, and I think you're doing a great job, but most of the Australian po politicians are, I tell you what, that's why we look at other shows. And hopefully when we get something, someone like you as a politician, maybe we'll be more invested in Australian politics. That's looking very hopeful. I've met some of the, I've met Christina Canelli and the, um, the Michelle Rowland for Blacktown. Yes, yes. Um, they didn't really inspire me to, you know, go into <laughs> politics per se. Um, but I, I like to be involved with, in it to some extent when it comes to the Kurdish activism side of things. Yeah, look, um, uh, um, it's kind of like you're right because when you see people like Mr Morrison with all due respect, I only, I find this mind boggling. How did the prime minister after losing still stayed in the parlor, in the prime minister house and he was not able to pack his furniture over a month. So I don't know what he was thinking. Yeah. The, a lot of things are just 
so hard to fathom, like even how Donald Trump got elected, don't know how that happened. Still, like, you know, trying to understand. But You know, we, we live in those day and age where you really don't have substance when you look at political leaders. Political yeah. leaders had substance, even if they were narcissists. Yeah. They had substance, like, you know, even if they were uh, a bully or even if they were racist, they had a substance. I mean, for example, uh, someone who was very controversial, Winston Churchill, the Second mm -hmm. World War, the, 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 actually the UK Prime Minister, and you guys have probably studied about him in the speeches as well. He was a very profound speaker and a very smart man as well. So they still had some sort of substance to them. Yeah. Oh, I'd, now I just feel like it's deception and um, dictatorship. Don't see anything else, especially in the Middle East. Oh yeah, that's 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 another story. But I guess that. Oh, in the Middle East is a very completely different story. That's right. That's right. Uh, actually, some of the Year Six students are doing a. Um, well, my group are doing the Uyghurs, and their that's their exhibition focus. Um, and that's been really interesting as well, looking into um, the Chinese Muslims that are in um, concentration camps in China. Uh, so if you see that, if everyone, anyone who's watching, if you see that exhibition group, um, definitely look into it because it's uh, very interesting. And also, you know, the way you said it, uh, as you're speaking about politicians, um, uh, probably, I think your children may have mentioned this as well. There's hardly any Muslim leader that came out and spoke yeah. uh, openly about their, their, their suffering. Yeah, there was a, a protest at UTS where there, there was um, a, a meeting with, uh, I think, China, China's uh, Australian ambassador. Um, and they actually raided that um meeting at uts the protesters and that was something that went kind of viral on, on social media recently you can check that out as well i have to get more on social media that's something i don't know well so i have to learn i'm not sure if it's good to know or if it's better not to know but it's one of those questions would you rather know more and um uh, you know what I, i'd rather know more because i work in the school and sometimes when they say some of the terminology I actually don't get this ter terminology. It's better. I know it, so I know where they're coming from. Yeah, so you know how to tackle it. That's right. All right, look, uh, tell us, give us an advice. You know, we come to that point where, you know, we are living in those day, day and age, and mashallah, as I said, you are an intelligent young uh, woman, and you know uh, you're learning, you're on that journey. You've got so many roles. Hopefully you fill them in future. Uh, and you know what, yeah, well, we, we definitely want to see young leaders like you to come forward. So give us an advice. Give us an advice as a school community. Well, we don't get to see each other as uh, we would like to because we're so busy in our own lives. And um, give us an advice. In terms of uh, the school community, like how we can connect? Yeah, no, even that or a general advice to all of us that work in the school. Anything. Give us two advices. You're a psychologist, so that'd be two advices because we could not gather a lot of surprising facts about you, but we can definitely gather two advices from you. Um, one thing that's very important is to work together and not against each other. Um, that's something that I always say to a lot of students as well. Um, and another thing I would say is to listen when you're listening and instead of thinking about what you're about to say to the other person uh those are the two advices that i would give and i think implementing those things can be very change very um can make a lot of changes for the work dynamic uh i think that you know a lot of things are changing in society um, life for students is also changing with the role of social media, Muslim identity, Australian identity. Um, everything's becoming very complex and it's, it's hard to um, catch up with all of these things as teachers as well. Um, I would say just to be open-minded to these changes um, and just be like water, as Bruce Lee said. Oh, so you do watch Bruce Lee. I have seen that clip and it's stuck with me because I think it's a very, um, very nice quote. 
No, that's such a great advice. And I actually want to say something to you. I quite liked your second advice because we live in a day, time, day and age where people are always worried about what they want to say, even though they are listening to other people. Uh, it's, I don't know if it's a pre pretend listening, but then they always say uh, the things that they want to say, regardless of the other person, even if he's saying the same thing. Absolutely. And it comes because they don't ever acknowledge that they've understood what the other person has said before they actually say their point of view. And it's it's a listening, but it's a kind of chaotic listening where it's just like a waiting for the person to stop so I can finally say what I've been wanting to say. That's right. Uh, look, it brings me to an end to the session, but also it's not it's not the end of uh, the the show yet. We've got the game show now. But in this game show, we don't have any prizes to give away. But that's the fun part that I enjoy. And not many uh, people sitting on the other side enjoy it. So I will play a riddle. No pressure. Take your time. Answer yeah. in your own time. Again, as I said, no pressure. Because there are many people who actually have not got this right. So, and if you ask me, I wouldn't have got them right as well myself. So... No pressure. Take your time, and I'll I'll mute my microphone, and yep. uh, and I will play that uh, riddle. And take your time. Once the riddle is done, I will pause it, and I'll give you enough time to answer the question. Yeah. All right. Let's go for it. I don't know which one it is because I had to do a back and back back to back interview. So I am just playing the next one, which I've uh, which I've played to the person before. Three. You have seven guests at your birthday party, and you've got to figure out how to cut your round birthday cake only three times to make eight equal size slices. Seven for your guests and one for you, of course. Time's a ticking, and your guests are waiting for their cake, so get going. Okay. I'm going to be thinking out loud. Yeah, go for it. Well, there's two layers to the cake. So you only can cut the cake three times. That's three it. Times. So you get three slices. Now, if you go one, two, and then three, that's four, then that's six. And then there's two layers. So if you break it up in the middle, that's 12, more than enough. Oh, is that your final answer? That's my final answer. <laughs> okay, let's see if that's the right answer. Answer? answer? Well, first off, first you have to cut have vertically to cut right down the middle of the cake, of the cake to make two make equal two pieces. pieces. Do the same, do the thing, the same but thing, but this time horizontally, time horizontally, horizontally to make four, make four slices. slices. Your third and final, third and final cut, cut should be should laterally, be laterally across, across the cake, the cake which will quickly which will turn quickly your turn four, slices four slices into eight. eight. So how'd you so do on this one? Eh, no eh, one. No. I think you're right. You know, I, was, I wasn't so far. But you, in a way, you're right, because you've done those. You could have, the, you did speak about cutting the third one, but that's what your answer was. You're actually, because it's too, uh, two side the cake, so you can actually give one side, and that makes it eight, which actually is right. Because the icing between is soft, so I just thought it would break apart. But it would be smarter just to cut it down the. the That's middle. right. All right, look, it was uh, an honor to speak to you, and thank you so much for giving your time. And I really want to wish you all the best uh, with this AIA venture of yours, and yeah. hopefully we see you over here grow with us and also that uh, you know what you spoke about becoming an art teacher or bringing that art therapy uh, may uh, people who are listening may they allow you to actually bring that embed that and i do think it's a great idea look i really want to thank you again it's an honor to speak to you again and uh, it's not that we don't speak we actually do speak uh, on on many levels in the school as well but there are so many people who never get a chance to know this side of you so hopefully when they hear this side of you you probably <laughs> might have more visitors coming your way 
Maybe. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for this lovely initiative. I think staff well-being is, is so important. So I really appreciate that you've done this. And sorry for kind of babbling on and thinking out loud. I didn't think too much about the questions before I came on here. No, it's all good. It's natural. It's been- I. Yeah. No, no, as I said, it's natural. Uh, this is what I want in my interviews. I don't want, uh, uh, a, you know, an acted uh, performance. Yes. I'm looking forward to the podcast, inshallah. <laughs> All right. Look after yourself. Assalamu alaikum. You.